I saw a post where some folks were wondering if the AMD RX 9070 XT, when overclocked, could get close to the Nvidia RTX 5080. So I decided to dig into myself and run some real world tests. Apologies in advance if I sound weird as I still have a cold. For this comparison I'm using the Zotac Solid RTX 5080, not the OC version, and the Powercolor Red Devil 9070 XT. These GPUs are paired with a 9800X3D CPU on Windows 11 with all the latest updates applied. Both GPUs are on the latest drivers available at the time of testing. I want to emphasize that the 5080 during testing was at stock settings, no tweaks were applied. I've been using the 9070 XT as my main for a while now and the overclock settings I'll show you are stable, at least on my unit. That said, the settings you're seeing now are unstable with the power limit at stock settings. I had issues in lighter workloads where the GPU clock hit around 3400 MHz. Bumping the power limit by 10% fixed that issue. To keep things relevant, I looked at the top 100 most played games on Steam and picked a handful from there. Now, even though the performance uplift when overclocking the 9070 XT isn't the main focus of this video, I still took a quick look in a handful of games. Here are a few quick highlights. In Civilization 6 at 4K I got a 8% uplift in performance, in Marvel Rivals at 1440p a 7% increase and in Counter-Strike 2 at 1440p a 6% increase in performance. As always I'll show side-by-side -side comparisons at both 1440p and 4K using identical graphics settings aside from the resolution. After the side-by-side -side runs, we'll dive into the charts and look at ray tracing results afterwards. The writer of these pages knows what will happen. The writer of these pages knows what It ain't this complicated.
Looking at the rafter results at 1440p, the 9070 XT overclocked actually matches the 5080 in Cyberpunk 2077 and GTA 5 in haste. In GTA 5's case, the engine is capped at 162 frames per second, so both cards hit that ceiling. Surprisingly, the 9070 XT overclocked even takes a win in Master Hunter Wilds, a title that seems to perform better on AMD hardware. In all other games tested, the 5080 holds the lead, even when the 9070 XT is overclocked. At 1440p, the 5080 was ahead by about 12% on average. At 4K, the gap grows. The 5080 wins in most titles except Cyberpunk 2077 and Master Hunter Wilds, where the 9070 OC manages to keep up. Interestingly, in The Last of Us Part 2, the 5080 crashed repeatedly at 4K using the same settings, and this is the reason there are no 4K results. More on that later. Overall, at 4K, the 5080 has around a 24% performance advantage over the overclocked 9070 XT. That's likely thanks to its higher memory bandwidth, which really starts to matter at higher resolutions. Now, let's move to ray tracing games. Quick note some of these games use upscaling at 4K but not at 1440p. I had to make that choice because otherwise frame rates would have been too low for a meaningful comparison. The writer Which one of these motherfuckers you want? about to take away your privilege.
door. Surprisingly, at 1440p, Assassin's Creed Shadow and Master Hunter Wilds favor the 9070 XT even with ray tracing enabled. That really caught me off guard. These results highlight a point. Games optimized for AMD GPUs can perform really well on the 9070 XT even in RT heavy scenarios. But once we move to games built around NVIDIA GPUs, like Alan Wake 2, Cyberpunk 2077 and Black Myth Wukong, it's no contest. The 5080 dominates. In GTA 5 in haste, the difference between these two GPUs is massive. Maybe AMD needs to do some driver optimization for this game. Overall, at 1440p, the 5080 pushes out 29% higher frame rates with ray tracing compared to the overclocked 9070 XT. At 4K, the 9070 XT overclocked is on par with the NVIDIA GPU in Assassin's Creed Shadows while testing it in Monster Hunter Wilds. But overall, the gap only widens. The 5080 maintains its lead in most games, delivering around 35% more performance overall in ray tracing titles. As expected, even with a solid overclock, the 9070 XT doesn't quite catch the RTX 5080. But to be fair, it's not supposed to. The 5080 is in a different price class entirely. A more direct competitor to the 9070 XT would probably be something like the 5070 Ti, but even that one should be more expensive, at least when MSRP is taken into account. That said, I was genuinely impressed with the AMD experience this time. I never had an AMD GPU at launch before, and the drivers were rock solid. That's in contrast with NVIDIA's 50 series, where we've seen a wave of issues and I've experienced a few myself. My first NVIDIA GPU was the TNT back in the day, so yeah, I've been around. And honestly, I don't remember a NVIDIA launch that has this many lingering issues two months in. Gamers Nexus has a video on this. Meanwhile, the 9070 XT has been smooth. I've had zero driver related crashes at stock settings. Even with the OC settings I've been using for almost two weeks now, no crash. Pretty confident I've dialed in a stable configuration. And that's it for this video. If you liked the video and found it helpful, hit the thumbs up button, drop a comment below to help with the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel. Take care and hope to see you all in the next one.